Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Bold Experience. We are coming to you from Long Branch Baptist Church in Greenville, South Carolina, where our pastor is no other than Sean Dogan. Hi, I'm Reverend Emil Caldwell. And I'm Reverend Denise Caldwell. And today our lesson is entitled, Conquering Faith. So, but before we get into that, the most important thing of everyone's day should be prayer. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for allowing us to wake up this morning, have activity of our limbs and in our right mind. Lord, we thank you for all the many blessings that you have provided thus far. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for mercy and grace on today. Lord, we hope that what we discuss will be edifying not only to your people, but pleasing to your ear. So, Lord, in all things, we're asking you to have your way. Have your way in this ministry. Have your way in this study. Lord, we bless you. We love you. And more importantly, we need you each and every day. And let all of God's people say, Amen. 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 Well, good morning once again. And we are so glad that you have joined us on this morning, taking time out of your busy morning uh, to be with, with us as we go through this bold experience. And today we want you to uh, really get in tune uh, because some of the things that are really important are going to come not in the beginning of the lesson, but through the middle of the lesson and, of course, at the very end. So by the end of this lesson, what we hope that will happen in your heart and mind is that you will remember the love God described by the writer of First John. Amen. Amen. The next we want you to reflect, reflect on the various various expressions of God's love. And then we want you to respond to the challenge to love others with Christ like love. Now, today we'll be using the King James Version, the new King James Version. And our scriptures for this morning are first John chapter four, two and three. And then verses 13 and 17. And then we'll be covering uh, 1 John 5, verses 4 and 5. And at this time, I'll go ahead and read this in your hearing. Uh, that is again, 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. Then we'll be 1 John chapter 4, 13 through 17. And then we'll have 1 John uh, chapter 5, four and five. Amen. 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 Let me read that for you. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. And, and this, the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. I've read two and three, and now we'll read 13 through 17. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit, given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the Lord that God has for us. God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as it is, so are we in this world. Amen. 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 Now I'll read uh, John, 1 John chapter 5, 
4 and 5. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Verse 5. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. 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 Hallelujah, somebody. Now, as always, the way we like to do it is we want to cover the who, the what, and the most important aspect of it all is the why and how it builds us in our faith. So right now, I'm going to turn it over to Reverend Denise Caldwell and let her give us a little background on the who in our scripture. Well, the who in our scripture today that we're talking about is the Apostle John. And he was thought to be the writer of our scripture this morning. And as we know that John was a fisherman and he was called by um, Jesus to join the other um, 11 disciples. And for three years, he followed and learned from Christ along with um, Peter, James, as they were part of the inner circle of the gospel. And as he referred himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. God went on, I mean, John went on to lead the church in Ephesus before he was exiled in the Isle of Patmos. At the day of judgment, this was a big concern for him. This judgment refers to the ultimate judgment of God. See, in the book of Hebrews, he believed that he, he would be a day when God would judge the nations and bring victory to um, God's people. We find that in the New Testament that God didn't just focus on just one nation, but all the nations and all the evil that was going on in the day. And the Bible clearly reminds us that it is truly that those who believe and have faith will inherit eternal life, and that unbelievers who did not have faith will have eternal destruction. But knowing God and knowing God's love, it demises the apprehension on that day of judgment. But what we should be doing today is to reach out and make sure that we reach out that others may be saved. Amen. Amen. Reaching out is important that others may be saved. Quite frankly, that is uh, one of the main issues of uh, us being a Christian is to reach out uh, to make sure that Others have the opportunity through what we tell them and to what they're willing to hear that they may turn from their ways and be saved because we realize as Christians that this, this world that we live in right now is not our final resting place. It's our final resting place for our body, but it is not the final resting place for our soul. So it is important as a Christian that you reach out and you try to encourage someone else to turn from things that may not be of God, that they may become saved. Now let's get back into the lesson. I almost started preaching on, on that. Well, here we go. I'm going to give you a little background on what was going on in our scripture of this morning. We find that the letters of John are three epistles that contain insightful and significant questions about the fundamental nature of Christian spiritual experience. John used simple language to explain what a Christian should know and what they should believe. John simplified things that it wouldn't be as hard to recognize his points, recognize what he was getting at, and more importantly, recognize who he served. So it's very important that we look at this. But John not only simplified the scripture on this morning, we find that John simplified the, the unity of the Trinity, which is the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He also simplified the inward and outward lives of the Christian. He then went on to, to uh, put in the forefront the presence of the Antichrist and the coming of the end of days. Now, I want to have a little footnote on that right there. When we talk about Antichrist, many of us believe that when we say Antichrist, we're only dealing with the devil. But you must understand, in these times where John was preaching and teaching and writing these letters, when we say Antichrist, John is referring to all non-believers. Therefore, the word anti 
Christ, against Christ, not believing in Christ. So that's a little other footnote for you that it's not only just the devil. And, and Antichrist is such a strong word and we just pin it on him. But best believe if you don't believe in Jesus Christ or God or any of the above, Holy Spirit, whatever, then you would be labeled in this time Antichrist. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what I want to do in this lesson is this. As we go through this lesson, I want you to be confident. Confident is going to get you a lot further ahead than not being confident. So I want you to be confident because as we, read, as we said, this, this title of this lesson has some bearing on where we're going this morning. All right. So we want you to be confident. It is important that you know that you're going to have a conquering faith if you have a confident spirit. Let me say that again. You're going to have a conquering faith if you have a confident spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's cover 1 John 4, 2 and 3 and verses 13 and 14. And we'll label this confident confessions. As I say, you got to be confident because confidence is going to go all through this lesson. Confident confession. Both John's audiences and us today have been misled by people we've trusted. I know we all been there. You put your heart and soul into something. You ask somebody something. You, you, you confided in them only to find out that they couldn't be trusted. But at this time, John is referring to the false teachers of the day. So many of them at that time were claiming that they were of God. But John clearly lets us know that if we were truly of God, then the spirit would be in us in such a way that we would be able to act in boldness and authority and claim and openly confess that Jesus, the crucified, resurrected Christ, was truly who he was, who he was been and who he's always been. Amen. Amen. So John is trying to let us know that if you couldn't confess that Jesus Christ was crucified, raised from the dead and now sits at the, at the sits at the father's right hand, then you truly weren't sent by him. But John and the other disciples, they witnessed, they witnessed all these things concerning Jesus Christ. Therefore, when, when they have, uh, stated the things that they know, stated the things that they have seen. Their testimony is certified by God. They not only witnessed it, they lived it, and they went on through it. Amen? Amen. But here's the thing. As Christians today, as we live, we all as Christians receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's something to shout about right there. The Holy Spirit is what gives us living proof, gives us living proof that God still lives and that his power remains forever. And with his spirit within us, it gives us the power and authority to love like he loves, to kind of go to that next level and find out um, what that may be through confidence. We're able to lean on his understanding, lean on him for all of our needs, all of our dependence, should fall on him that we may rise to the occasion because people of God, I'll let you know, loving is not easy. We will never be able to love like Jesus Christ did because his love is perfect. But that doesn't mean that we don't try to aspire or attain that next level in our love. And when we go to that next level, then we should realize that we didn't stop right there, but we should continue to go higher and higher and higher that we may love others the way Christ loved us. So what I'm trying to say, what John is saying in the scripture is to those false prophets, those false teachers that claim to be from God, but didn't necessarily, they didn't necessarily have to testify and say they believed that he was crucified and resurrected. They didn't say any of that. John is basically saying, if you can't talk about it, then you can't be about it. Amen, somebody. Now, Denise, why don't you tell us about 1 John 4, 15 and 17 and what that has to do with uh, our lesson this morning. Well, in verse 15, it's a confidence judgment. It made a really good point because it said, whoever confessed that Jesus is the son of God, God dwells in them and they in God. And because of this, there should be an evidence of love. We would never love like God loves us. But 
the fact that God dwells in us certainly keep us focused on the next level, mm -hmm. knowing that we are loved by God in so many ways diminishes our mindset, our fearfulness on Judgment Day, because God allows us to love without discriminating. And whatever we do, we can work in confidence in whatever God tells us to do, relying on him and recognizing him that it is not in our power, mm -hmm. but everything that we do is in God's power. That's right. But this relationship we have with God, we can attain anything and we can achieve anything through his power. Amen. I like what you said about Judgment Day, because oftentimes people feel as Judgment Day as being a, a doomsday, at least for some of us. If you're not living right, then could be. Mm -hmm. But a lot of Christians also feel that Judgment Day is doomsday. Of course, they, they, all, they, they all feel that if they've served the Lord and they've done everything that they have could and done his will and his way, that they'll be going but they still have some kind of apprehension about Judgment Day. What the scripture is trying to let us know is that if we live in the here and now, proclaiming Jesus Christ and him crucified, that Judgment Day will not be something that we should be fearful of, that something that we should, that we, that we should be dreading. But the only reason why we could be dreading it is if we're not living right and we're not loving right. The scripture says, and what Reverend Caldwell has told us is that God's spirit and the reason why, I'm sorry, and the way he loves us unconditionally, we should pay it forward so that we conduct ourselves in love to others right here on earth so that we are basically acting Christ-like. So when judgment day comes, we won't be fearful of our judgment because we have done everything that we needed to do right here in the here and now. So we've already set the path. But many Christians feel that, you know, I'm going to proclaim them and do this. But hey, if you're not loving right, then that may come up in the in the final judgment. You may be asked about that. Amen. Amen. So with the spirit, we have to use that to our exam, uh, okay. for our advantage. Now I'd like to cover John 5, 4 and 5. And this is this is something you can get up and run about. Confident victory. You have to be confident in the victory. And I'm going to read that scripture one more time for you. It's 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. And it reads, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. I'm going to read that one more time. For whatever is born of God mm, overcomes the world. But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. If we believe that Jesus is the son of God. Verse five says we can overcome the world. Verse five says. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Mm. Overcoming. Confident in our victory. In the letter's final chapter, John turns to the interrelationship of love and righteousness. Verse 3. Those who are allowed God to dwell inside them mm, find it less difficult to live by his standards. People of God, you must understand when it says in verse three, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. I want to let you know that if you can't connect with the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and you have not said yes to Jesus Christ and God the Father, it will be difficult for you to live a Christian life. Now, I'm not saying live a Christian life because it's boring or, or you won't like it or things like that. But you're not able to really fulfill the statutes that God has commanded for your life. Because, you see, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And until we turn from our wicked ways, which is the way out God gave us through his son, we are still living that way. We are incapable as physical human beings 
to aspire and attain things of God in the spirit. We must learn that we have to turn. We have to set ourselves up that we're in line with him. We have to allow that Holy Spirit to dwell. If not, then commandments and anything else are going to be high. We wouldn't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. We can't do it. I'll give, you, I'll give you an example like this. You can take a three-year-old and have a bowl of candy on the desk. And that three-year-old will take a piece of candy. And then he'll put the candy in his mouth. And you'll come up and say, who gave you that candy? Or where did you get that candy? He'll put the wrapper behind his back. He'll try not to suck on the candy as loud. And then he'll look at you like you don't know what you're talking about. Well, where did he learn that? Where did he learn that type of behavior? His parents certainly didn't tell him. His grandparents certainly didn't set him up for that. It's, it's inherent in us to do things like that. To do things that are contrary to the will of God. Amen. That's why we say in this scripture that it is important that we connect with him. And when we do, the benefit of that is that we can overcome the world. So if we have the spirit, we should not find it difficult to live by his statutes or his standards. The faith of a believer gives them power to discover victory over the world. You see, in verse 5, when we believe Jesus is the Son of God, we become one with him. This gives us victory because even Jesus has said, I have overcome the world. And I want you to notice something when he says, I have overcome the world. It's past tense. It doesn't say I will overcome the world. It says I have overcome the world. So even in any trial, any, any, any uh, tribulation, any problem that we face, we have to be confident in knowing that we already have the victory. Hallelujah, somebody. We got the victory. It's already done. All we need to do right now is walk this thing out. But God wants us to walk this thing out in love. Yes. In his standards, in his statutes, that we set the bar high, that we'll be there the way he wants us to be there. Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let his will be done. Hallelujah. Come on, Reverend Paul, well, say something. Tell me something before I shout. But see, one thing about society, it teaches us to love conditionally. Mm-hmm, it does. And I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be honest. Some people are hard to love. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna love everyone the same way sometimes you have to love somebody from a distance mm -hmm. because your personality is crass whatever but the point is you still have to love them but it doesn't mean that you have to be in their environment all the time or around that person because sometimes your environments and whatever is going to crash and then some people live in rejections from those who claim to love them mm -hmm. you know some people can say all the time they love you but do they really mean that they love you? But see, the most remarkable thing about God is that God's love is unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And it is complete. He never changes it. He never takes it away. And one thing God also tells us is that his love can give us eternal life and not death for those who spiritually believe in him. And that's an assurance that nobody can take away from us. Yes. That's something that God has promised us and his word is never void. So we must always keep in mind of that unconditional love that God has for us, no matter what, and that nothing can ever separate us from that. And see, God dwelling in us gives us that perfect love. And we have to remember that the closer we um, grow to God through studying the Bible, studying your scriptures, through meditation, through prayers, and this will help us to line up with God's will and learn what the word love really means. Amen. That relationship that we have with God gives us boldness that we can ask God for anything in love. And we must always that remember that the scripture teaches us that we are born to be conquerors. That John, reman, John reman, reminded us of this because he said faith is victory and that we have the victory and the faith to conquer the world. So always remember that the person who that is born of God will win 
and will never be defeated because of their circumstances or whatever that may come their way. We are conquerors because of our faith. And as long as we keep that complete trust in God, we will have the victory. Amen. Amen. I like it. I like it. But what I want to what I want to touch on is is when we talk about love and, and we and we talk about how we can love conditionally. You know, it's 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 easy to love someone that loves you back. It's easy to be friendly to someone that's friendly to you. But what God is let what I'm sorry, what John is letting us know in our scripture is that because we have a perfect love in our life, because his love is unconditional, because he he doesn't carry, he doesn't hold any faults or any anything against us, race, color, creed, background, family name, any of that. He doesn't consider any of that. He loves us unconditionally. He's letting us know that if we remember that he loves us that way. That even though somebody may treat us, a, you know, some kind of way or do us wrong, that we still have that unconditional love in our corner. So therefore, he's saying that you have to take that type of love in that situation and use it as your fuel, as your victory and not your defeat. Don't be fearful to, to, to be friendly. Don't be fearful to show love because you're love unconditionally. So no matter what happens, God requires you just to love. He's not looking for the result of that love, but he just wants you as a Christian to love. And with that, he is well pleased. Amen. 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 So let's get to the, the final, the, the, the final uh, uh, thing that we want to talk about this morning. And that is the activation. The activation of our faith and how this scripture pertains to that. People of God, I want you to know that the Lord holds his family in high regard. And when I say his family, I mean the brothers and sisters that are in Christ. When we say yes, we become a family. The Hebrew term would be the mispocket. We are in God's family. So he holds us in high regard. He loves us so much because we are family and he is in us and we are in him. That makes us in unity with him. But just because we're in unity with him, that doesn't mean that he wants us to sacrifice a relationship with him. So when we have a relationship with him, we're able to commune, to talk with him. He'll talk back. We are able to get different things from him that will give us the courage and the knowledge to move forward. In a relationship, you have to communicate to him and he will communicate back. Not only in words, but he'll put something in you that'll cause some type of action. Sometimes you'll do something, you don't even know why he did it, but that was God moving. Because when you're in close relationships, sometimes he can do things to you, move you around, and after it happens, you go, I wonder why I said that, why I did that. Nothing but the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. But we learn through this relationship to grow and to go to that next level in love. We pray to God and he'll reveal the levels and his plans that he wants us to attain. Uh, he will give us faith. He will, he will build us up. Uh, he will renew our confidence. He will take everything in account that we may be successful in our journey with him. People of God, you must know that we are more than conquerors. But here's the thing. We have to be confident in our faith. We have to be confident in our love. If we are confident in those things because God first loved us first and his love is unconditional, what happens is this. When we have a confident spirit, God will surely produce a conquering faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And with that conquering faith, we can overcome all of life's challenges. We can be conquerors right now. You don't have to wait. We can conquer the world right now. But it's not through might. It's not through our strength, but it is through love. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus for allowing us to be in your presence. Lord, we thank you for having your way in our lives. And Lord, we certainly hope that this lesson has been edifying to your people. Lord, we also hope that you are well pleased with what has been done on this day. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless each and every one of those that are in the sound of my voice. 
Bless them tremendously. Those that are believers, Lord, encourage them. Give them confidence. Build their faith. Take them to the next level. Heavenly Father, those who are not found in you that might be labeled the Antichrist, Lord, give them a heart and a mind that they may turn from their wicked ways. Open up their heart and mind just a little bit that you may enter in, that your spirit may reside and you may help them turn themselves around. Because Heavenly Father, you are the way out. You are the Redeemer. You are the Savior. So Lord, let them realize that at this present day. Lord, encourage us to reach and teach your people as we go forward in our life. Heavenly Father, give us the tools that are necessary to do so. Bless this nation. Bless the ones that, that have not had a edifying uh, word in their life. Let this be the one. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. It's in the matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.